no! They're stealing the tire fire! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> America. The world's on fire. So everybody, get on your roofs, grab some binoculars and popcorn, and let's hope that 2021 is going to be a little bit better for people. And talk about something that's not political. At least I hope it's not political. Now, I've always stated that I don't care for rooster teeth, mostly akin to rooster teeth's ruby, which sucks because I would liked rooster teeth back in the day. And it all started with a single question. You ever wonder why we're here? And that, my friends, is what kicked Rooster Teeth into popularity. And although I want to go more in depth in a bigger video sometime talking about Rooster Teeth's rise and fall, which you can kick my ass into gear by sending me some Ko-Fi's, link down below, in order to get that out faster, this video is talking about some of the more... <sighs> recent issues with Rooster Teeth. Like, you guys remember that Vic Mignogna situation that happened about not too long ago? It was all together, safe. Vic. Mignogna. Yori Lowenthal. That does it. I'm out of here. Like, no matter which side you stood on that situation, it was a big media circus. And worst off, Rooster Teeth came out even worse than normal because of it. So cut to a few weeks ago and you got Ryan Haywood of Achievement Hunter fame and Adam Kovic of Funhouse both having been exposed to sexual deviance. That's gonna be a fucking yikes for me. But not only abusing their power over their fans, but also using the depression core in order to get some defense going up. In a word, it is disgusting. Also recently, Jeff Ramsey was also accused of some unsavory things. Oh, that one is a little bit more murkier since it mostly focused on him being unfaithful to his ex-wife and he claims that they were already separated when that happened. Still kind of uh, shaky considering that he got with a fan, but hey. Use your best judgment in that situation, if you ask me. But I think it's worth noting that this isn't the first time that Rooster Teeth got into hot water by doing something stupid. Like, there was this clip that was flowing around for a while that Rooster Teeth kept taking down. But luckily, I have it. Do you know what Connect the Hots is, Ryan? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with that game, though. Tell him, Jeff. Alright, so Gavin and I have a rule. It doesn't work as well in, in our current house as it did in the old one. Where, if we're driving to work and we see a hot chick, we have to follow her at a very slow, deliberate, and creepy pace. <laughs> uh, until uh, we see another hot girl. Or if we see another hot girl, then we have to switch and follow that girl. And we keep this going until we run out of hot girls. Now since Gavin and I live pretty close to the college, Sometimes we can get distracted a good, I don't know, Gavin, what would you say, like 20 minutes? Yeah, 25 minutes I think was the record. Yeah. I have made Gavin look like a really creepy <laughs> more than one occasion. <laughs> Not <laughs> fun. So <Sorry>. I've... <laughs> That's another game we play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went past the school. Game took a little turn. <laughs> <laughs> I have caught Gavin checking out uh, questionably aged people a few times there. And to be fair, this recording was done in a more casual manner, and sometimes things will get out and people will say stupid things. But it's still something to consider, especially when later on in a podcast, this behavior was called out by another member. Slowly driving up the car behind them and possibly stopping in front of them and rolling down the window? What, do you, what would you call I that? I don't drive, that's old Jeff. And no, you're right about it, you guys My point is, together. if you see like a hot girl in a bikini at a pool, it's just like, I know I shouldn't be looking, but I, it makes me happy that I'm looking at this body. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, but seeing a hot chick at the beach in a bikini is not following someone from the opposite direction of where you're going. Why do you keep shrugging it off? You've literally said, like, we're meant to go left, right? But if we see a hot chick, we turn right. Thank you, Michael. But this really throws a lot of questions onto Rooster Teeth and how they seem to have some questionable materials going on behind the scenes. If you don't know who Shane Newville is, then you are failing yourself as a fan of Ruby and Rooster Teeth. Around two years ago, Shane released an open letter addressing and accusing Rooster Teeth of deliberately twisting Monty Ohm's vision shortly after his passing. But at the very least, we all know that Rooster Teeth is all for diversity and inclusion. After all, they're willing to speak out on such good matters such as BLM. And it's not like they themselves view people in the past in order to, oops. And wow, that came out two days before that statement. <laughs> that is some weird timing. This, my friends, is Mika Burton, someone who some people might be more familiar with a speech that she said a long time ago on a Rooster Teeth podcast. Well, I just feel like the, the inequality between women and men is going to take a really long time to get over that hump, not even just 
pay equality, but when it comes to sexualizing equality, it's just like a guy sleeps with a lot of girls, he's an awesome bro. A girl sleeps with a lot Do of guys. Do you think that's slut. still the case? Like when I was a teenager, I would say that was definitely the case. Oh no, it's still a case these days. Like if I say I've slept with a lot of guys today, I'm a slut. If a guy sleeps with a lot of guys today, a girl stay. He's, you know, oh, good for you, bro. What up? That's so cool. Yeah, this clip. Yeah, it resulted in Mika getting harassed online, almost to the point of committing the big S word that'll get me demonetized, should I say it on YouTube. Now, according to Mika, she was used as a means of deflecting criticism and was used more as her father who had connections to Hollywood. As a result of not wanting to be used as a shield, Mika left the company and was immediately blacklisted. Now, this is according to her, so whether you believe her or not, on that regard, that's up to you again. I kind of want to back up a little bit since we've been talking about some heavy topics for this video so far, and I want to take a step back and talk about how some of the lesser stuff, but it's still serious to some extent. Like, let's talk about the animation department. And more notably, Genlock. Genlock is summer sci-fi action movie that just happens to be animated. It is set 50 years in the future, war has broken out, and it happens to involve giant robots. Chicks dig giant robots. If you're not familiar with Genlock, it's a season-long anime-esque show that's built around mecha suits that apparently is getting a season 2 and picked up by HBO. The show had some big names on it for voice acting, such as Michael B. Jordan, Monica Rial, and David Tennant. Allons-y, allons which, you know, led to some accusations of the head of the animation department, Grey Haddock, stealing funds from Nomad of Nowhere in order to make his own pet project a reality. Now, you can say that this is an accusation. Since, unless we got actual confirmation of this happening, I'm a little on the fence to say this is 100% true. Which is odd considering the number of Glassdoor reviews that, from previous employees who talked about the animation department, wasn't exactly the greatest place to work and kind of lends credence to this. With such claims floating around as standardized legal pay being less than normal, excessive crunch time that could have been avoided, as well as not paying people for their overtime, which resulted in a ton of hours being done for free. One source estimated that both Genlock and Ruby Volume 6 had about a third of their seasons made entirely for free thanks for not paying overtime. People were working up to 80 hours a week, with management offering empty platitudes about the crunch and how they'd resolve it only for such resolution to never come. What's even worse, in order to foot the animation department that was already stressed out due to Gray's brilliant leadership, he decided to have the idea to take on dozens of full-scale university interns for 90 days to help with the animation. And they were promptly given the boot. Rooster Teeth not only has a connection with Full Sail to make this happen, but Rooster Teeth also has a cult-like fanbase that can see working for them as a dream job. And they were taken advantage of. And this is kind of what adds to the Glassdoor reviews, because there are a lot of people warning about others about this company to work for. Again, whether these are true or not, that's up for debate. Or it would be if the creator of Nomad of Nowhere didn't come out confirming that this was completely true. The Glassdoor reviews, the abuse of interns, and the fact that Rooster Teeth likes to sweep things under the rug and hope the problem goes away. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. But getting back to Genlock and Grey Haddock, the guy who was the director and head of the animation department of Rooster Teeth was given the boot after apparently someone from the animation team informed the CEO of the time, Matt Holum, about these issues. So in the rare instance, Rooster Teeth actually addressed the controversy. Of course, there were tons of layoffs happening after this, and you can't really blame anyone who finds this to be very likely Genlock's fault, due to the internal failures alongside the repeated flops made by Rooster Teeth's games division. But that's something in and of itself that's an issue, like Vicious Circle was a disaster back in 2019. Vicious Circle is basically an uncooperative multiplayer shooter game created by Rooster Teeth, where you work together to kill a big chicken and escape. But you also have to kill the opposing players helping you, and if you die, you work for the chicken. Don't forget about the nuggets, you have to collect enough of those or else you won't be able to escape. If you're confused, I don't blame you. The game is exactly as confusing as it sounds. Let's just say that between this and Genlock, Rooster Teeth laid off about 13% of their staff. But hey, that vicious circle stuff is a different subject right now, and I want to keep talking about the animation side of Rooster Teeth. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you who watch my channel know that I've covered Ruby a few times. It's the show that pretty much put Rooster Teeth on the map, and how Rooster Teeth is pretty much now killing their own presence on YouTube. If you don't know about the recent news, Rooster Teeth announced that they would be taking down all the main episodes of Ruby off of YouTube. I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain why this is a bad idea. 
Not only will this tank rooster teeth in the algorithm, but it essentially makes the series less accessible for the fans, especially when there's a paywall involved. Heck, it was kind of that paywall that had a number of fans not want to actually watch Genlock in the first place, and now Ruby's original episodes that were free to watch on YouTube are now gone. If you don't think that's a big deal and you're fine for paying for Rooster Teeth's service, which, you know, has had issues in the past, more power to you. I'm not gonna judge you. It's your money, you can make that business decision. However, what's not good is the response that Rooster Teeth gave, basically trying to placate the rabid fans. Like, I'm not gonna go through the entire list, but I'm gonna talk about one in particular. Myth number four. More people watch Ruby on YouTube than on Rooster Teeth. False. More people watch Ruby on Rooster Teeth than on YouTube in, in the last 12 months. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Gee, it's almost like you jackasses put the new season only on Rooster Teeth website last year, and thus would obviously get more people to your site to watch the new content that you didn't put on YouTube at all. Hey, trust me. What could it hurt? What a, what a dishonest answer. Again, if you don't find this to be a problem, more power to you. I hope you enjoyed the new season of Ruby. Keep giving your money to Rooster Teeth and as they keep wasting whatever money you give them. Like for example, Rooster Teeth adopting and sponsoring other Let's Play channels. Funhouse, still active but lost a number of their original crew. The Creatures, lasted a year before dying out with a number of the members forming Cow Chop. Cow Chop, died this year! Sugar Pine 7, a very successful channel that was devolved into nothing but a podcast. Screw Attack, now only known for a death battle with most of the cast that ching to create Game Attack. Which is sad because Screw Attack once had the angry video game nerd and he's still doing strong today. It's all the same shit. Oh, right, and don't forget that in December 2019, the Rooster Teeth store was hit by hackers who used the spoof page to gather payment info of users buying from the store. It was caught immediately, but did affect a small amount of customers. In compensation, those who were affected were simply offered Experian credit monitoring for a year. Now, there's a lot going on with Rooster Teeth, and I do hope to make a much more in-depth video, but this video is basically me going over the bigger issues that I myself had, especially with the bigger cases that I went over at the beginning of this video. Like, I didn't even talk about Vice President Michael Quinn, who had hurt his wife, which is ironic considering how he stood against Vic Mignogna when that bomb dropped, yet turned out to be a bit of an abuser as well. And this isn't even going over all the other things that's going on. There is a lot to talk about, but this is just a small sample of what happened. In any case, if you want to see a more in-depth and honestly better edited video, I'm doing a Ko-Fi fundraiser. Well, the bigger video is in the works, if we raise about $200 for it, I'll get the video out faster. In any case, I'm Manga Common, remember to examine your fandom, and thanks for watching.